let's take a look at some of the deeper functionality uh, that Eros offers. In our kind of song creation screen, we're gonna go through, uh, we're gonna set up a couple of things. We're gonna start in the stereo recording mode, which is essentially where we're going to just sort of remain for the, the purposes of this video. Uh, we're going to use six by six mode for parts and tracks. We're going to sync our tracks according to the track length. Uh, so the start time of each section does not necessarily need to line up, but they will all uh, occupy the same number, same amount of time. Uh, we're gonna leave song grid mode on quantized. Uh, we'll leave song part tempo global, uh, loop decay off for the moment. Uh, we'll hit save here. This will take us back out to the song creation screen. And one of the new features that we're uh, kind of leveraging here is the tap tempo. Uh, I have set up the Eros as our MIDI master. And so it is transmitting uh, the tempo uh, to, as you can see up there, the volante is, is kind of taking that tempo. And as I tap in different uh, kind of values for that overall song tempo, uh, and we're also going to have our uh, microcosm, which is, uh, currently off screen as sort of our uh, other clocked element here. Uh, we're gonna leave our, we're gonna turn our count in on. This is our, our sound for kind of our, our, our bass uh, recording. It's a Sir Alt-T Pro into the Walrus Deep Six and Benson preamp for a little bit of drive and compression through the Volante and a touch of reverb from the big sky. Uh, so we can kind of tap in a, a kind of a nice, lively, but um, you know, kind of reserved tempo here. Uh, and I do have uh, one of the kind of the newest functionalities uh, from version five enabled here, which allows me rather than to hit record, it does allow me to arm a recording and use the auto record functionality uh, to essentially now that we've hit arm, I can play a note and it will trigger recording at that tempo. Uh, so we're gonna you know, tap something in here and we'll get going. So at any time when you're in this view, you can use uh, the loop volume wheel to kind of, you know, fade in and out the overall loop. Uh, we'll kind of touch on the mixer once we have a little bit more content in here. Uh, but as you can hear, I had click uh, set up to basically only play for the initial metronome uh, so that we can kind of set our initial tempo for this loop. Um, but now, you know, based on kind of how we've set up the uh, recording configuration, I can add another layer. Uh, by hitting next track. So we'll kind of wait for the turnaround. So now by holding the left foot switch, I can bring up in the slide out menu. We're gonna select mixer. And now we can kind of like blend our elements together and we can use uh, kind of either touch or we can kind of go through. Uh, and I, I find that I get a little bit more precise kind of movement out of uh, sort of selecting with the touch screen uh, and then uh, kind of using that. But you can always use kind of the foot switches to, to trigger certain things. Uh, you, know, you can kind of select through with your feet. Uh, mute, uh, obviously this is um, you know, very, very easy to operate with the foot. So this is something you can do live quite easily to sort of fade in and out uh, certain sounds. We're gonna exit the mixer uh, and we're gonna, let's, uh, you know, let's go ahead and give this uh, a reverse. So kind of following the turnaround here, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse that layer.
So now, as you can hear, that second layer has been reversed. It's now showing uh, kind of a, a different color to, to signify the, the change. But overall, you can kind of hear, let's, we'll bring this up a little bit in the mixer. Um, but really, really cool that not only can you kind of mix through what you want to hear, uh, you can kind of go layer by layer. And uh, for ambient stuff, this is just a really, really beautiful approach to things. So let me call up a preset for something a little bit dronier on the big sky. Something that I think that'll work. Uh, let's add another layer that's just kind of a, some bass ambience. So we're going to want to pull this slightly down in the mixer, uh, just so that it doesn't kind of overshadow everything else. Um, but now what we've kind of got is we've got this kind of three-part ambient arrangement. Uh, one thing you will notice about that third section is we did go for 16 bars instead of the eight that the first two layers are because we set uh, the synchronization to be uh, length. Essentially what that means is that every layer that you create is going to carry uh, some multiple of the bass. And so, you know, we started with eight bars, which means that I can make a section that is 16 or 24 bars, but uh, for this all to function and kind of sync up and line up the way that uh, the, the kind of system intends with that particular synchronization structure, uh, it means that you're dealing in kind of multiples of those sections, which will, um, will kind of make sense if you're trying to build songs uh, versus kind of more freeform sound on sound looping. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basics of what building a loop is in the arrows. Um, let's take a look at our start fade time. Uh, so I've set uh, kind of our setting to 10 seconds on start fade time from the typical uh, five that is the default here. So we're gonna kind of back out. We're gonna go back to our song. Uh, and we're going to hit play all. And it kind of gives us a slow rise in terms of arc for, for that fade in before it kind of reaches full volume. Uh, this is just kind of one way that you can interact with your song uh, overall. Um, we can also kind of hit stop all here and head back to home settings. Uh, we can kind of take a look here uh, in our stop fade time. Uh, we can also kind of do uh, a timed stop. And so we can say, you know, we'll do a 15 second fade here uh, and head out. Same thing. We'll hit play. We'll let things fade in. And we can kind of slowly uh, fade out. You have kind of options in the moment to cancel your stop or cancel your fade. Um, but overall, if you're trying to use this as a performance tool, if you're trying to use this to kind of capture, um, you know, some certain elements with, with smooth fade in, fade out, that is one uh, really, really beautiful set of functionalities, especially for uh, ambient musicians uh, with, with with kind of looping overall especially if you're playing over a loop the ability to fade out without having to you know lean over and turn a knob or, or try to you know get that angle with your foot uh, this is something that is just built in to make sure that your performances feel and look and sound the way that they need to 
Uh, this is just a, a great sort of layer on to customizing the way that you loop through this thing. All right, let's take a look at two new features for version five of the Eros uh, operating system. Uh, first, what we're gonna do is we're going to head into settings. We're gonna go into behavior and we're going to set up our auto record. Uh, so here, what we've got is we've turned auto record on. Uh, we can set our threshold to what's appropriate. So if you've got a lot of ambience, you may need to increase auto records threshold a little bit so that it's not triggering off of something like a long reverb tail per se. Um, but overall, if we come back here, uh, there's a couple things that we'll notice. Um, one is that when we come here, our record label has been replaced with the word arm. And what this means is that we are able to hit arm and as soon as I start playing it will launch into recording um, sort of a along the lines that we've set so I can kind of set a tap tempo um, but like we kind of have shown right so that allows us to um, you know essentially if we've got this on a desk or if we're kind of using this in a way where uh, we need to record the moment that we are playing uh, or uh, if you are like me and have a little bit of a difficulty uh, coordinating the the hands and the feet when using this on the ground uh, this is something that basically makes sure that everything launches at the right time they punch you in uh, right as you're playing and they make sure that um, you know, the Eros does all the work for you in making sure that your tempo, your measures, all of that stuff lines up the way that it needs to. And if you're not used to looping with kind of specific tempo and measures in mind, this is something that kind of forces you to level up in your skill set and looping at the same time creates much cleaner, much more beautiful looping scenarios and sounds, in my opinion, because it's, it is much closer to almost like a DAW for your pedal board uh, from this perspective. Um, which is, you know, just a great feature set. Cool. Yeah, now if we go back in, uh, now that we've kind of looked at how auto record works, let's go back into our song settings. And what we're going to set is our song grid mode to auto quantize. And so what this means is uh, that the device is going to basically detect what the tempo is. We can, you know, set if we want to and we know exactly kind of how long a section is going to be. You can change your set length uh, to a number of measures, but for uh, kind of the purposes here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play something and let the device figure out what the tempo for that is. Uh, so essentially, you can see here tempo in the song setup is going to show an NA for not applicable because it's going to figure that out for us. So we're going to hit arm for our auto record and we're going to play something. So what you can see is now it's kind of placed the playing into some you know measures that are now passing by. Uh, and now if I engage the volante here. What you can hear is that it's actually kind of sent the amended tempo that it's determined over to my other devices. So what we can do, I'll add a little bit of a deeper reverb. Um, we'll keep the Volante on. I'll make sure the spacing is set to totally even here. Um, we can add another another layer.
So what this, you know, effectively allows you to do um, is it lets you kind of effectively just sketch out an idea uh, and let the arrow sort of figure out the logistics when it's hooked up to these other MIDI devices. And it just lets you play and figure out something and then create layers and uh, coordinate the, the time-based pieces uh, without too much needed kind of direct feedback and input from you, uh, which makes this an incredible writing tool, something that's very, very useful uh, for just putting something down, if you're a multi-instrumentalist, it's something where you can kind of, you know, patch something in, record it, and then, you know, have this, you know, send MIDI out uh, for, for clock and, and those sorts of things, uh, you know, to a, a variety of devices to keep everything synchronized and, and coordinated. Uh, one other kind of exciting feature I wanted to talk about in uh, sort of the, the V5 update for the Eros uh, is their updates to kind of this navigational functionality. And essentially by holding the left foot switch, you have access to this slide out menu on the right, uh, which has a whole bunch of navigation options from, you know, heading home, copying songs, uh, even kind of things within, uh, within songs that you can edit. You can create albums. Uh, and open them and you can kind of delete parts and uh, even just create songs straight from uh, kind of the pause menu. Uh, and this extends even into the, the playing environment, right? Where if I'm in, uh, in a looping session, I can actually open up this side menu uh, and use it to navigate, you know, things like soloing a track, reversing a track, muting a track. Uh, we've kind of shown this a little bit with, with the mixer and the reverse. Um, but what this really boils down to and what it allows you to accomplish is without really a whole bunch of, uh, you know, physical knobs or even just kind of, you know, physical UI elements, we've got, you know, four buttons and a wheel. It allows us to really uh, accomplish almost everything that we would need from the more complex functionality of the pedal visually. Uh, and from anywhere. I'm, I'm obviously, you know, operating the pedal by hand, but this is something where, you know, the font is large enough and the pedal is laid out in such a way uh, that by, you know, holding this switch and then using the wheel with your foot or your hand or, you know, what have you, uh, you're able to kind of navigate to the functionality you need. And this is something that I really love. Uh, if you've kind of been around the channel for any length of time, uh, you've probably ascertained that I am a huge fan of devices that increase possibilities, that unlock uh, functionalities that, that you don't have access to before. Uh, the problem with those sorts of things often is that with increased complexity, uh, user interface and workflow kind of can sometimes go out the window. Um, and what, what Singular Sound has really, I think, proven uh, in, kind of, in kind of the form of the Eros is this masterclass on providing you an unlocked experience, but then giving you all the tools you need to navigate. And so uh, there are menus to work through, and, and a lot of that functionality is stuff that is going to be you determining your use case. Are you someone who needs a fade in? Are you somebody who, uh, you know, kind of needs certain types of behaviors from your looper? Are you busking, or is this how you're running tracks at a show? Um, you know, all of these kinds of things are, they, they've created a hierarchy of decision making, a hierarchy of, of user functionality that is incredibly coherent and incredibly useful. Uh, they put the, the daily use features at the front, uh, but at the same time, for anything that you kind of need a little bit of a deeper look into, they've got this, this slide out menu to help you navigate, help you find your way through it. Um, so there's, you know, in kind of using this pedal, there's never been a point where I've really felt like I was having to, you know, strive to find the thing I was looking for. It's all kind of laid out in a very, very logical way. Obviously, we're, we're looking through a few of the features and, and kind of showcasing how some of them function. So we have, you know, gone through a couple of use cases today. Uh, but this is, I think, the thing that ties the, the entire picture together for me in, in the way of um, it, it goes so deep and there's... I'm sure for you guys, uh, there you know there's already ways that that this comes to mind as a, a level up in, in process. But uh, all of the while, sometimes those those levels uh, of complexity and depth have been really chopped down by really really effective user interface design.
we're going to go into Loop Studio, and we're going to take a look at Loop Decay. And so when we turn this on, essentially what this allows us to do, it's going to give us a little bit of warning uh, telling us that what this essentially does is a destructive, uh, kind of it almost emulates destructive media, um, such as like magnetic tape and, and whatnot. Um, where we can essentially set a rate of decay. And what this means is right now I have uh, it set to 33%. So we're going to hit save here. Uh, but essentially what the decay rate determines is when I overdub, the base layer's volume overall is reduced. And so uh, if I set the loop decay to 50, what we've done so far has just been kind of creating uh, discrete tracks within the, the looping session but you can also overdub any of those layers. And when I have loop decay on, it will additively insert what I overdub over it, at the same time reduce the underlying loops volume uh, before that occurs. And so essentially what this allows you to do is it lets you keep remnants of loop sections and lets you uh, sort of retain sort of memories of, of areas in loop sessions that, that maybe have been uh, replaced by other motifs, other sounds, um, but kind of keeping it there in the background. For ambient playing, this is huge because it allows you to really make sure, um, you know, that everything sort of remains cohesive at the same time, um, you know, has a little bit of, of evolution to the arrangement. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit arm, and let's just, you know, put together a quick loop real quick. So kind of the same you know, structure as last time. We'll, we'll kind of add another ambient layer, but with this loop decay set to 33%, when I hit overdub, it's going to reduce the current track and layer what I play over the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So now what, what's happened is we've kind of placed two layers on the same track. If we do this again, it'll kind of further duck the old layers and, and kind of continue to add this morphing quality to this layer. So let's do it again. Let's, uh, let's add a little bit of kind of you know, soft drone and, and see how this comes across. So as you can hear, both of the original parts have kind of dropped to the, the background. This is kind of what we expect, right? But uh, what this allows you to do is, we've done this obviously on a single track within the session, but this allows you to sort of create like a, an ornamental layer uh, where you've got like kind of a structure of three layers and then one layer that kind of keeps changing to keep things uh, fresh and interesting and, uh, and kind of diverse within the, the you know sonics what you're playing without sort of making a hard switch from this to that. It allows you to kind of create a gradient across which uh, these arrangements morph and change and uh, all of that good stuff.